So I'll I'll do a whole floor. I'll let you just do a whole table or whatever. Okay. I'll even do some more decorative that's not some dumb weird thing like I'm doing here. How did the glitter stick to the sides? Um, as it was carrying up, I blew it right into it, and some of it dripped right off the top onto the sides too. So you're about to see how glitter stuck to everything. We're about to make glitter stick to more more things. Maybe you guys. Who wants some glitter? I'm going to hit all the girls as clitoris, or glitteris, glitterises, <laughs> glitterises. I never say that right, I don't know. I can find your glitteris really quick. Yeah, well, and normally it's really, if you notice how fast I'm going, and I'm not going like that just to hurry, but I want the roller not to sink down in, because I don't want to push the product to one end and then push the product back. Mm -hmm. and, and a lot of times I'm moving kind of quick just so that the roller floats, sort of, because I want to kind of massage the product in this place, because it's really, you don't, it's not like you're just painting. Take, took me a while to get good at Let me check my tempo. I'm only 97 degrees on this, so ah, uh, never mind. Can we sell one of your alcohols? Okay. Um, yeah. I'm not sure where my one. We'll get this flat really, really fast. Now this is super hot, so we are wanting to warm it up even more than that to get it to level. Mardi Gras in the back room on the bottom shelf. Oh, bottom Do you want me to grab it if you want to take over here? Yeah, yeah. I'm not very good at doing the live, guys, so I apologize. So here is our. I'll take you by all the really beautiful stuff in class. So how are you guys? No, I've never operated a camera. Tracy, hey. are you having fun? I'm having a blast, man. <laughs> Can't wait till we attack. You have a whole bunch of single guys on here right now asking for your number, Tracy. Wow. There is like so 40. Cute. Yep. This <laughs> <Yellow's now. laughs> I'm just kidding. <laughs> now they are. Now they will. Oh, that's that is good, guys. Now, don't be afraid to brush that, guys. We don't have to leave this as fractures. I was gonna swipe it in with a brush and you'll get a really neat wispy effect that'll look very much more natural marble. But I do think it's good you tried to practice the fractures, but my overall goal for this was for everything finally to just be brushed in. And I do believe if you brush it across, these actually look really good, some of them, so. But if you do brush it across, you're gonna get a totally different effect and I do think you guys are gonna like it, so. Why did my fractures sink yesterday? Probably just temperature and timing and that's why we're doing this with you guys to teach you those things, so. Oh. Oh, my God. Yeah. All right, I hope I don't create anybody any anxiety here, but I don't want to ruin anybody's samples, but we have to finish our piece correctly here, so 
This is my glitter blower 3000. <laughs> they sell them at Lowe's and Home Depot, and I just dump the glitter right on the side. Now, every little girl, I think, should have one of these tools, don't you think? I think, you know what? I love my little girl's messes. Actually, when they leave, I get sad. I'm like, I don't want to pick their mess up. It reminds me of them. The worst thing is not glitter. Uh -huh. to them as a craft table or something. That's what you yeah, totally. Yeah. I'm going to put a uh, light strip around the inside and try to make it look like glowing icicles or something with glitter through it. So the light really refracts through that really nicely. So you can make a little weird table or something. This would be perfect for Palm Springs. <laughs> yeah. Rainbow blue. <laughs> there more. Yeah, there is always more. This will be the last. This will probably be the last litter the table sees. Then we'll never have to hear Levi joke about glitteruses again. If there was something in here that rhymed with balls, you girls would all be making jokes about it. So. <laughs> okay. That's it. Very cool. This looks good though, doesn't it? Yeah. I love that. I may spray it just a final really heavy spray with alcohol just to help lay the flake down. Sometimes if the flakes are up sideways, little bubbles, the best way to get a flake floor to lay flat sometimes is just to spritz it with alcohol. Then don't torch it. Now, if you guys sideswipe, I would like some of you guys to try brushing just really linear from one side to the other, all of your white stripes. Brushing the whole entire piece, and then I'd like you to torch it. Lightly torch it. That, that was my goal for those pieces. And, and remember how I said no fractures. We're just wanting to swipe it in, and then every single one of you went and did little fractures again. So just remember, I don't matter, but if your customer says that, your customer, that's when they cuss and swear and throw things and say they're not paying you. Yeah. I'm not paying you, so it's not my deal. <laughs> Welcome everybody and have a good day. Thank you for joining our live. Uh, we are going to do probably one of the funner and easier quarters I've done in a long time here. The pour I'm going to do up here guys, it's going to be a really easy pour. I'm pouring it hot. Um, normally you'd just pour this at a normal temperature, but you'd wait about an hour before you'd start spraying it. A little fire in the head of your I have one for sure. All my accents are only going to be sprays now. Except my hillbilly accent. This stuff looks all thick, but it actually, if you just move a little bit slower, it rolls in a place really Yes. 
little bit of patience, which is not going to hurt you. Yes, we're in a class, guys. We're in Grand Junction, Colorado. Uh, we do classes every month. No, unfortunately, Mary Mellons did not show up. A little bit quicker. Which kind of green is this? Is this that translucent green? Um, forest, sorry, I yeah. believe, yeah. yeah. Sometimes I don't personally, but some guys that for some reason don't seem to be able to pour at the right temperatures or whatever they struggle with their edges, the edge coat helps them. But if you can pigment right and you understand timing and temperature and edges, you'll never have that problem again. But you sell edge coat. Yeah, because I'm saying, like, there's a lot of guys that. But I mean, you have the right product that somebody wants. Yeah, yeah. And, but there's just a lot of guys that, I don't know why they just. They, they like, I don't know if they don't get a temp gun or the temp gun lies to them or. Very, very simple way to do a countertop. Uh, Rachel, I don't know what one you're talking about. This is the. Oh, I'm sorry, right remind now. me what it looked like. Uh, yes, Christy, it's food safe. Just make sure you don't accidentally just squirt a big spray or something really fake looking or something up here when you're doing that. So. Test, test all your sprays off the piece. Don't let it drip over the piece. The bottle, if it drips, it's fine if it drips onto the floor, you just wipe it right off, it's just powder. That you one? wouldn't want it dripping over your piece, so don't hold the bottle out over your piece where you're gonna get a really unnatural drip. No, it's not purchased. Thank you guys for joining the lab. This is a class. Do you guys like the class or no? Yeah. yeah. Yes. yeah. Okay. <laughs> See, you guys have to come to a class now. You just have to, so. 
this is all my employees just so they like the class. <laughs> <laughs> now they're going to leave. Um, you guys are seeing the alcohol, which is creating the divots, and it'll evaporate and be smooth. I did granite. I own a small granite countertop shop. I did quite a bit of granite, but a lot. Over about a thousand mm -hmm. kitchens is what I was contracted. And I just got sick of it. I started seeing everybody in the world buying prefab granite, and anybody can comp comp compete with you with no quality and no skill. Yeah. And so I got into concrete, and then I started patching stuff with epoxy, and I came up with what we do now. Were you doing concrete countertops? Oh, that's some foreign place. It's some of microfiber topping overlays. I did a lot of flooring, a lot of tile at the time still. I remember I was on leave in the Marine Corps. My dad had got a job as a finished carpenter in Vegas, and he was on a house Carl Icon's house. He was the eighth richest guy in the world. And I'd never seen rock on a countertop, and I saw them cutting rock, and I was like, what the hell? Yeah, there's like rocks in that guy's countertops. And this is back in 2001 or something. And he's like, that's granite. They were actually putting slate roof on. Have you ever seen them like cut the slate roof really nice? And, and I was like, man, I want to do stone sometimes. So I, I thought if I ever get out of the military, that's what I'm going to do. So, yeah, it was harder said than done, but I did do it. it was very successful. But I saw the writing on the wall when we started this. Yeah. And not everybody wants epoxy, but I'll tell you one thing. I'd rather have what only two or three people in your whole town do and be the highest quality than try to be one of 400 island <coughs> granite setters and know that no matter what you want, everybody in the world can come and bid against you. You're not competing with Home Depot. Yeah, you're not. Nobody's competing with Home Depot, whereas epoxy really does put you, if you can solve the right problems with it, you can be very competitive and very profitable. But you have to solve the problem. What, what kind of problems do people say? What, like going over tile, something like that, where you know we pour over, we have poured over a ton of tile. Colors of charcoal. Yeah, that's a charcoal. Yeah, you see probably a totally different side than I do. You go in and fill the the grout lines and let that set, and then go for it. Say what? Yeah, I'll show you. I'm going to go over all that really in detail. All right. Very, we go very detailed on how to go over tiles. Okay. So. Mm. Mm. Red. Yeah. Red? Blue. 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 In our OD green? Um, we have kind of an OD green. We've really? Made, you uh, went into a, a it's everything I own is OD green. Um, so. yeah. <laughs> Where they do the, uh, oh, yeah. the sheepdog contest maker. And he walked in. And he had an attitude. Um, can you oversaturate it and will it smooth out? And are you going to torch it again? You could oversaturate it, but I'm going to probably wait 20 minutes and then torch. But yeah, whenever the customers like it, I'm going to stop. So you have your customer right there watching it. Just because you can't. You guys tell me when to stop. You're seeing uh, the alcohol, guys. That's going to evaporate. We're in Grand Junction, Colorado. Levi, am I right in assuming that the, that the warmer that is, the more that's cured already, the more that, upon, or that uh, alcohol is just going to sit on top? Yeah, as long as you don't saturate it too much where it starts blending. I'm trying to purposely speckle back and forth and keep letting it dry over and over and over. So I don't, if, as soon as I let it um, completely like become a puddle Poxy, of alcohol, like all starts uh, blending. With so a granite really look. Patient with this. Back to the basic grain. I don't know. I mean, I'm not saying this is maybe anybody's cup of tea, but do you see how easy it would be just to come in and literally spray an entire countertop? Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. So. I think it looks bad. I do. Yeah, me yeah. too. And now I'll give it a little bit, and then we'll torch it lightly, and it'll be good. So. 
Yeah. This is a good one, too. Yeah. I wouldn't want to disrupt yeah. this color, so I wouldn't yeah. throw it off or anything. Like, I'd really lightly torch it and do it a few times. Yeah, to try yeah. To get the alcohol dissolves off of it and it'll get smaller. But if you see this, I mean, there's yeah. a that's a pretty natural marble yeah, pattern right there. And now if I wanted to, I can sand into this after I torch it, sand it with, like, say, 400 grit, and start cutting that top off, and it'll give you a honed granite, like, cut look where it'll look, bisect it just like a rock would, because now you do have that, um, the alcohol is evaporating, but it left that powder down in there, so you can get a really cool, like, rock effect like that, so. Are you going to do that? Yeah, we're we're going to be sanding on Thursday, so we'll sand several things, so. Thursday. 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 That's the old class Wednesday, sorry. <laughs> 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 oh, oh, right. How are all your samples doing? Does anybody need help with anything? Or? I, if I was you guys, I would do what I said, and I would brush it with a brush, swipe everything, torch it. I know you guys don't like to do that, but that's what I would do, because that's the only way I knew how to do the sample, and I was going to have you spray a little bit of accents very, very lightly, and do a final torching, and quit, and you'd have a really nice white marble piece. But if you guys want to just do your little weird veining, and this is just a finger painting class with no instruction. I don't mind. Uh, okay, so. <laughs> yeah, just start brushing it lengthwise, the whole thing. Start from the edge. Yeah, yeah, all the way from one edge, all the way off the other edge, and just keep going back and forth. Make a pattern with it too. You'll see that white track with your brush. Be patient. Brush it out, and then torch it really quickly. So like that. Some of you guys are torching it before you brush it. I would brush it, torch it, spray it, torch it. Spray it with what? Alcohol. And I was going to do just a little bit of charcoal, a little bit of gold. I was going to do speckles of gold, speckles of alcohol. Yeah, huh? What's the next one? Okay, I can help. Yeah, make sure it's like really high quality. It's just epoxy. It's not going to be exactly the same. I see a lot of this. Right on, I like this. Yeah, I, this, is all I, this is all I would do, and I just see this. Now watch this. One guy actually did listen. He did exactly what I told him. Look at this. See, watch him pay attention. See how he obeys. He even uses my hand. <laughs> now watch. Watch this. Now, where's that torch? Now I torch this in just a few minutes, and look how just set, that's a really simple, really basic white marble sample. And look, you still see some of your veins from down below, and you could actually do this on an entire countertop really quickly that you'd messed up the day before, and it would look beautiful like that. If you guys get all foo foo and you're trying to do veins into the clear, you never. I don't pour like fractured veins into a clear because it's so much product at any point going into there to where it always just kind of flows out and you don't get a natural looking vein. So, so this would be a two a two day job. You would let the first or day morning day. and afternoon. Yeah, if you do care of Oh yeah, this torch I took you. <laughs>
-hmm. And they think like, well, it's just my tool. Okay. And that's fine. They will not be able to replicate pieces. So, okay, so now here you've got three things. So yeah, yeah, I like that. You like that. Okay, so you want that. I got you, Levi. I got you. <laughs> you want the room to be roughly between 70 to 80 degrees. Now I'm going to try to just spray a really light mess right on your corner. Okay. Nikki, yes. can you do me a favor and saturate that with alcohol, please? Got it on my hand. Huh. Um. <laughs> if there was any more, it might be cured over there on that table. Um, it does matter what type of brush you use. We're in a workshop setting, so they are just using the, the chip brushes. But you'll want to make sure you're using a, a high-quality brush if you're ever doing a job. Wow, that's beautiful. Thank you. Just grab a regular gold for you. Yeah. If you have too much alcohol, how long do you have to wait? <laughs> um, just so it's evaporated. Okay. okay. We'll watch. So it's not going to mess anything up. You can see it right there. Yeah, I can. That's why I'm like, oh. Sorry, guys. I <laughs> you know that was bright. We're in Grand Junction, Colorado. Oh no. Piece of debris. Oh, did I just drop that? Oh, it came off the thing. I'd give it a few, you know, five minutes and I torch that through there, but leave, give it time so it just naturally sets up like that. And that's going to be really clean. I, I believe it. So, nice little rust in a lot of time, iron deposits and stuff. Um, the, where granite doesn't even look pretty at first, they, um, they'll cut it, spray it with water, expose it to oxygen while they're polishing it. And that's when you see all this like iron oxide rust in that and stuff. So, add some depth. Uh, Charles, give our office a call. We have installers uh, throughout the U.S. in 28 countries. Yes, countertopepoxy.com. We also have all of our contact information in our bio. Hey, 
Wow, it's kind of looking like a travertine. Oh, I want marble. All right. Yeah, it does. Wood grain look, someone said. Kind of does. Don't be afraid to walk around, guys, and look at other people's stuff. There's some really good stuff here. So I'm finding... Yeah, yeah. Yeah, talk about the process, guys. That's what we're talking about, guys. Look at this. Very natural. I really like this one. like, <laughs> <laughs> um, so in the workshop, he's just kind of explaining how you can spray colors for accent colors and how if you could do, if you do a little gold, it'll look like natural iron, but they're all just learning. So we spray alcohol to give dimension, pop air bubbles, add accent colors. Doesn't matter. See how his accent spray kind of made it like a 3D effect? Uh, classes are three days. I believe they're three fifty for your first class. Um, and then $99 after your first class. We started with a white base and black veins, and then we went on top with pearl and sprayed it with charcoal and gold. We're in Grand Junction, Colorado. Hers reminds me of this sample. <laughs> No, we have a lot of videos on TikTok, or our YouTube page. We're actually building a really cool um, table. I'll show you guys. In this class, we're uh, building a, a wood grain table, and they did all this yesterday. Like a chiseled edge. They're gonna sand it. This is just MDF board. So we'll be pouring that probably today. Thank you guys so much for watching today. I hope you guys hit the follow button or subscribe or whatever. This is a class here. We are going to be doing a table here in a minute. I'll be doing a quick building tour with half of class here in about 30 seconds. If anybody wants to follow, should they follow? Or? They want to, yeah. You guys want to. We're going to be going outside. We're going to show you outside, inside stuff, floors, and different things that we've done here in the office. So. I'd like to take this half of the class right now, and maybe not the back table, like these tables, and we'll do a building tour, and then I'll take these tables. And hey, how's it going? show you different surfaces. We're going to start out front. So if you guys want to meet me out front, we'll do a really quick walkthrough and show you different kinds of the box and what we do. I don't know what we do, baby. It's just going out.
Use the name Mary Mellons for 20% upcharge. <laughs> Jeanette said, use the name Mary Mellons for 20% upcharge in class. Dude, we should have a discount code on Mary Mellons' name. I would do that. <laughs> oh, man. The alcohol is 99%. We use 99% because the 91% seem to have more water after the pandemic. More water content, I should say. I have a question. Yeah. So since you guys use 99, can we use Everclear? If 99 is not available in our area? Oh, Lord, I don't know. Ask Levi. Levi. <laughs> since, oh, I'll wait until we come back. Sure. Oh, we froze. Probably the Wi-Fi. So this out front here, you guys already saw this yesterday, but you probably didn't know about it. This is Super Tracks. You can put this over totally spalled or failing concrete. Right here we have all our expansion drawers that failed. Were you here in this class when we redid this? Okay. So basically here, and we have a video on it, we had all our expansion joints were completely fractured out. And there was quite a few through here, um, over like 200 linear feet. All we do is we brush a outdoor flex material, and I'll go in detail on this, um, to prime both sides of those expansion joints. Um, and these are all working expansion joints. When we actually prime both sides, we over slurry the whole crack, do a walk behind grinder, cut everything back off, profile it seal our slab and broadcast. So this is usually a double broadcast. This is quartz. It's extremely color stable and very durable. We were hoping for worse damage over here. This winter we purposely didn't prime correctly along this so we could showcase correctly primed slab, um, joints versus non-correctly primed working joints to show the movement. And it did fail, but it wasn't as bad as we were hoping. So we were trying to show people why never to do it. So, which already it looked bad, but yeah. And that's if it wasn't primed, but over here, these are all very, Good working joint. Were they that bad and that's it? Yeah, they're all that, those are actually very nice. This had a failed coating on it that was ground off. So this slab was much worse than what's over there. So, so they were just doing fog through that. Yep, and we have a video on this too. So and now on one for track. So uh, up around that swimming pool in the residence. Yep, this is called super track. Yeah. And it's a color stable port. So it's not like stamped concrete that has color fade. This will never have any kind of color fade. You're never gonna move a mat or something accidentally and see a color change. You may have to like detergent pressure wash and reurethane. These are also very maintainable. If you did start getting damaged or seeing a little bit of wear after five years, you could very lightly broadcast and since there is no color change and these are exact color recipes of colored quartz you would get that exact like if we wanted to go over there and do that pad we'd have an exact color match going into there it wouldn't be something that we'd have to worry about so so you can do it in stages for customers if they only want to do one yeah and a lot of people like yeah you have a pool and like a big patio and they'll be like yeah let's do the driveway next year so it's just fine. So and now we'll, the temperature? Like, what's that? Like, you know, if you have a pool in Texas, is this cool to walk on? Depending on color, and it is absorbent. So if it has moisture on it, just like cool decking, it will wick moisture and create a little bit of a cooling effect. But unlike cool decking, that everybody is so excited about cool decking, how do you keep your warranty on cool decking? Because I've gone over thousands and thousands of square feet of cool decking. The only way to go, cool decking is a absorbent evaporative coating, right, that creates cooling. Well, the only way to actually keep your warranty is to seal it every year, right? So as soon as you seal it, it's no longer absorbent, absorbent and evaporative. So you basically, to warranty cool decks, it can't cool decking, it can't be cool decking any longer. So that's why I grind that shit off and put this down. So <laughs> now I'll show you inside. We did over all the floors in here. It was a tile grid system and General Electric. This was their satellite facility. So this is a really unique commercial building with pretty ugly stuff. <laughs> Here's a table that a class built, kind of like what you guys did um, yesterday, very similar, so it's not going to be a lot of instruction. This is three sheets we court we, um, It is on my boardroom table, so I wanted it to be a little bit thicker and just look better. So 
I don't think anybody's ever understood my quote. So, um, the floors you're walking on, this is concrete. There was OSB subfloor over there, and then there's a tile grid system in the next floor. So we did all the floors, about 7,500 square feet, to match. Um, and what we did is we came in here and we traveled the <coughs> non-site wall epoxy in, and we basically filled all our grout joints and grouted our tile. We used very little product, it goes a long ways. Then we um, used a sander and we sanded off all the highs and whatnot. We um, we did slurry coat quite a few little areas the next day just to get everything really smooth, and then we flood coated it. And a class did every every single thing you're looking at was done by a class. So now we'll I'll show you some transitions. How do you make the flag? The flag, that's all just the logo I just put down. So that's all just vinyl. I poured the base color, set all the graphics, and then poured it clear over the top. And if you notice it's not glossy, I deglossed it down to 800 grit sandpaper. So just sanded it with 800 grit and you get that look. Yeah, you would never want your stand to butt it up like that. You always want to laugh your stand like that if possible. Because it's literally like this, your joints and things like that just are really limited. You can epoxy your joint, and that's really strong, but we'd have to let the epoxy completely set. And you, you can actually just do a butt joint with epoxy on the wood with a countertop epoxy, and as long as you fully saturate it and keep that clamp so the wood bearings tight to each other, that'll be stronger than the sheet was between the out of seam there later. Okay. This here is our wall epoxy. This is a non-sag epoxy, and if you can see, there's trial marks in it because we trialed this wall. And we're just trying to get it kind of flat now because this, did, this wall did dive in here and it had a bunch of ridges and it came back out. So we just tried to profile it. And the last class actually did this, and I did start sanding it. We need to sand the rest, so I was going to try if we had time to do it with this class and actually apply another top coat. I don't know if I'll have time. If we do, um, I will let you know. Um, but another fun one. So this here in class, if you'll notice, there's some spots I sanded through here, or the class actually did, and I don't, I don't leave them because I like to explain why this happened. This could happen to you guys. I see a lot of floors that look really, really good, but um, and they'll they'll take a lot of time in the middle of a transition getting everything smooth, and then right here they built this up too high and they dove off around the corner. This should have been this patch material should have been extended up here and feathered out a little better. It would have took five more minutes. But that's, I think it's really important to see these normal things because this here was about an inch and a half lower on this side than this. So right here, this is a major step so you down take right a here. Level then? What's that? Do you take a level, like to actually mm -hmm. figure that out as far as how you're going to pour? Like, um, yeah, sometimes. I mean, usually it's really evident, and you just know okay. once you get used to floors and stuff. Okay. But um, and this was like yeah, lower. So I just basically I'm not trying to create a perfectly level floor in all cases because let's say the building. That corner you shot it with a, a level and a laser level and it's yep. two inches higher than this. You, you don't want two inches of epoxy in there. You're spending yeah. hundred grand on epoxy. You <laughs> make it a nice flat floor. Take care of transitions like this because the tile guy's not going to do that. Nobody in the world's doing it, so don't do it. Okay. Just create a nice smooth. Trip hazards are worse. Transition stuff like that. So, but I like to leave stuff like this because you can see just a little really good work in the center. It's really easy to get like just not think that edge matters. And a lot of times it comes down to you're taking a, a big grinder here and you're grinding your transition back out and it's kind of a pain in the ass getting up next to stuff. So guys just won't get up next to things. So I'd love to leave those things because it happens in my shop and we can all learn from it. It happens in a customer shop. You don't get paid. Well, imagine if you had to re-pour 7,000 square feet, 8,000 square feet you're not going to. So you're going to have to spot patch this and it could be just difficult. It's not as easy. I mean, we could spot patch an area like this and you'd never know, but it would take you like hours. So, I mean, we would have a whole day of just grinding out little spots over there, here, here, you know, and filling them up, letting them cure, coming back and sanding them and buffing that into the main floor. One thing I love is this has all been sanded with 400 and 800 grit sandpaper on a Festool. So everything you see here, it's so nice that you, you have a very thick floor any kind of damage. Um, somebody drug a pallet down here on a pallet jack and scraped the floor and I thought it was really bad. And I took a palm sander in like less than five minutes the floor looked brand new. So and I've had this in all my lobbies. Um, we had our, la who's, who was at our last shop over on Patterson? Did you ever go over there? We had like 25,000 square feet and, and uh, like, uh, I have a truck that, a different one that had a lot of horsepower and I did a burnout on the floor and I left like five pounds of rubber under each back tire. And, and we had to scrape with scrapers the rubber back off the floor and then spray xylene down and melt it and sand it and everything. And we actually polished right back into a clean epoxy floor from like a 700 horsepower burnout for awesome. like two minutes. So uh, On a garage floor, doesn't it have to have a slant to allow drainage? Um, a lot of floors have slants towards the door, not all. Here in other areas, that they drain to a center drain. 
Um, but a slope for a garage is not enough to actually create like any kind of leveling issue for epoxy. There, there's also surface tension modifiers and good epoxies. So you'll notice a lot of epoxy companies will say like, hey, you have to have a flat floor. That's because they won't put surface tension modifiers and stuff in their epoxy. There's a lot of stuff you can do with our epoxy you cannot do with other epoxies, but like slopes and slope garages, I've even done wheelchair ramps because if you keep it at recommended thickness, we should have enough surface tension modifiers at all the correct temperatures and whatnot for you to do some pretty crazy stuff. So, and when we take our outdoor flex, that stuff, and we've done driveways so steep you can't park in the wintertime on them. And it still rolls out perfectly flat because it has surface tension modifiers that we keep it on that slope. So we have other chemicals that help it actually penetrate the slab. And then we have other ways we can help modify it with acetones and stuff like that. So I'll go over all the science of this, but, um, and then finally, the last thing down here, uh, well, we do have a wall here I did with my little boy, and here is what I want this other wall to look like when we're done. So this should be a really nicely, like this is the finish we should be able to do on this wall over here. I don't want it to look the same, but if you notice, you actually have a pretty clear cut reflection in this wall, so, and half done by a 12 year old. <laughs> so, and then this wall over here, this is our true metal. This is my tub. It is a little drippy because I was pouring this really super hot again, trying to get glitter to stick to it. If you actually take our tub and sink coating and pour it to a, to a smooth surface, it has so much, um, it has a slightly different base chemical and some other modifiers in it that actually help it really profile to almost anything. So, um, so that's that tub and sink coating. Those are differently done. We did a copper on this and then sprayed copper glitter. So, um, look, if you guys look here, this is students in about one month with their dirty little retarded fingers touching with epoxy all over my table here. They just keep ruining it. So please clean your little fingies and it'll help keep my stuff better. So this was all built flat. So this is about like the conference table. I think it was the same length. No, slightly shorter than the conference table, sorry. But this here, we built it all flat. I've tried every way to do, I've failed at every single way to do a waterfall table. Every way I've failed. I've tried hinges, I've tried pouring it. Um, at a 90, I've tried everything. And the best way I've ever done it is complete that piece. And if you look at this, it was just one big perfect seam. I took a Festool track saw, I ran a miter at a 45, ran it back at my other 45, and then pieced it together. If you notice, it's not a perfect 45 because this really badass old guy, he's way smarter and way better than me at woodworking. He invented the futon and he's telling me about all this stuff. And I was like, man, I don't want to question this guy. And he set the angle on my saw. And he goes, do you want to check that? And I was like, no, I don't want to check the angle on the saw that you set. You're like the best woodworker I've ever met. We set it at like 43 degrees. So if you notice, my angles aren't right. So always check no matter how amazing somebody is. Usually with me, there's always somebody better than me on the job site at something. And I like to just trust people to do their thing and not micromanage. Okay. But there, I would have done something wrong. How did you get that seed, that gold? The corner. Yeah, the corner. I taped it off and painted it. So you just painted it? yeah, um, this over here, this is our true metal troweled on, but not polished. But if you notice it polished, this is actually um, brass right here. That's a liquid trowelable brass you can paint and trowel on. And then we polished it right here. This area of the wall was polished up to about 5,000 with some polishing paste right here. We left the rest of the wall not as polished, but yeah, it's a finished wall. <coughs> you didn't use a roller layers. when you put the, the hexagons on? I did. I actually took the took the, my, um, temp, my stencil and I just rolled it on. If you wanted this smooth and you didn't want this texture in it, then you can compress that with a, let it kind of set up and start compressing that in with a, a little smooth finished trowel. And then you can get this like a really smooth sheet. So if I you guys thought about wooden sinks. Yeah, I've never done a wooden sink and I apologize. I haven't finished this. I I've always wanted to just build a sink. So I took a piece of this like $400 plywood and I tried to build a sink. And then I had this idea of a drain board over here. I think it looks hideous. So. This not such a good idea. Yeah, it so. is. Good idea, but yeah, it's a poor idea. execution. So, but what would you do different? Like that's why I wouldn't have left this in there. I don't know. I thought I was going to pour it clear, maybe in there. I just wanted something decorative, but I, I just don't like it at all. But the idea, I mean, you using wood, if you got a proper epoxy coating on it, it should last. Just like yeah, and especially like it, depending on where it's at and what you're doing, you may yeah. have to put a urethane at the exterior or something. But yeah, um, and I'm also going to show you guys how to polish wood permeate wood with epoxy and then polish it so you don't have an actual coating standing on top and you can make it kind of like petrified wood really classic so so yeah as you see this is and there's this is our other company we're kind of playing with and we haven't really done a ton with it yet but this is viking armor um these this panel here same exactly as what this was this is level three a pistol rated for any kind of pistol to stop 
um, it floats in water. Uh, it needed to take five impacts so that it would have NIJ rating, so you could be NIJ 3A. And um, they told us to shoot it for testing with um, five rounds of whatever caliber. And we actually shot it with 75 rounds of 45, 75 rounds of 9mm all full metal jacket. And then we shot 75 rounds of 10mm hard cast HSM fair loads, which if you know anything that you know, if you don't know. And then at, if you know what, 5.7, we shot about 75 rounds out of a 5.7 SBR. So, and we have one penetration. <laughs> One penetration with a 10 mil hard cast right down here where it hit where like 20 other rounds had hit. So, so for pistol rated, that's yeah, pretty amazing. It's simple. You can actually put it right on the outside of your vehicle. So, and any color you want. This happened to be finished like that because it was matching the finish of a buddy's Jeep. So, so what product is that one? This is just Viking armor. It's not really, we haven't really gone. I'm waiting to see what Congress is trying to make a lot of armor things totally illegal, and I don't want to put money into a company that I wouldn't be able to promote in the future. We also do some chest plates, but I haven't really finished publicly uploading those onto the site. And then I'll do show you the final table. Try not to touch too much or look around. It's all cut up because I actually cut all my vinyl on here because I want to see just how bad I can damage a table and how bad I can fix it. <laughs> Okay, TikTok. I can't really show you this table because we get removed every time. You guys can go. I can't really show it. The documentary that you guys saw that the Battle of the Badlands. We were trying to get the uh, Star Spangled Banner. Um, done by these guys, and they all agreed to it. Well, I found out the guy that sings the Star Spangled Banner and agreed to sing it for our for the opening song in our documentary didn't actually own the music. So, <laughs> so his owner called and was like, "Yeah, not so fast." So, um, so then they sued each other, and then the owner said, "Man, I love what you're doing. Um, I'll let you just have the song. Like, we'll send it over to you." And he like got fucking killed that weekend. So, like, some freak accident or whatever. So I was like, "Let's." So now nobody, the United States government owns that song, and I have a table. So I was going to just trade on this table, but he was a first marine. I deployed to Iraq with the first marine division, and he was a medic in the first marine division. So I wanted to do something that might be meaningful. Um, I learned a lot from this. If you guys see how much stuff is in this table, like guns and ammo, wouldn't you think that displaces the volume of epoxy significantly? No. If you saw this, it actually took up probably... Not just the weapons, there was probably at least 15, 20 gallons, 20 gallons of aggregate. But it didn't displace anything. This is still 100 ga 10 gallons of epoxy. And think about the thickness of the table is what made it be 110 gallons. But the thickness of the objects is what forced the thickness of the table. So really be thoughtful. A lot of times customers will want you to encapsulate things for a table, and they're not being really realistic about the price. Like, well, I have this object. It's All it is is an RPG-7. Why can't we like cast it while well, it's five inches thick and yeah. once we cast it you're five inches thick of a table you want your table to be four by eight you do the math volume wise you're 110 gallons right there without any aggregate you'd be like 140 so when you really think about that a lot of this aggregate like the 50 cal casings those all fill up with epoxy and you need to so bubbles aren't coming out so they didn't displace anything hardly and all the belt ammo and just so you guys all know this is all inert non-functioning hollywood stuff that even the most flaming Hillary Clinton supporter would support. So, um, huh. how you. heavy is that? Too? This is about 950 pounds, <laughs> thousand pounds. So it is kind of heavy. So, but no. it's durable. And if you see, I've been cutting on it now for about a year. Uh, I do weird templates for that armor, and I've been cutting on it with my like Kevlar cutters and everything. And I want to just sand this back down and show just how perfect you can make a table, no matter how cut up it is. So we'll have a video on this soon. So there's my children, just so you know. Those are my little Spanish speakers. That's about four years old now. So And she is not sad there. Her next picture, she was laughing and smiling, and she's actually, she's always happy. So, And there's my last job. When I broke my leg, I got to be an aerial gun instructor, so I didn't have to run run around on foot as much. So that was my, that's over Iraq. So. Levi, how old is this? About... And this was actually the center point, I forgot to say, of a major building fire. This is what, do you guys notice how we spray alcohol? Um, we have an awesome lady here named Monica. I don't know if you guys have got to meet her, and she's always super helpful. And I've been casting this with a bunch of casting resin, which you want to spray a lot of alcohol to keep it cool. But then I finished my finished coat, and I poured countertop really thin on it. And um, 
what ran upstairs, I came back downstairs to torch it like 20 minutes later on my way to lunch. I didn't know she had seen fresh epoxy. She thought it was gas tank. We didn't communicate. She sprayed about a gallon of alcohol or more down, like a lot of alcohol, just soaked the table, which is what we would have done with casting. And so she was doing it correctly. I didn't tech check to see anything. I didn't think she was helping me at all that day. I was just doing my own thing. And immediately there was a massive fire, popped the overhead, this whole table was just getting cooked. So, and I did put it out. That's also why we had the CNC down through. This was just boiled, cooked off, and we CNC through it, and we still have really nice clear epoxy. So. Yeah. So is this deep cast? That is deep cast, and that's actually our old formula of deep cast. Our new deep cast is actually clearer. And if you look at our front window, our front entryway display, what it, whatever you call that wall with the clock, that's actually all countertop epoxy, which is why you see the bubbles in it. But I didn't really care. I wanted to see how much countertop epoxy we could pour, and we poured about an inch at a time. And that also is about probably about an eight hundred pound bowl. So, but worked out really well. So, so this is all deep cast, even the top. Yeah. Um, no, the top, the very top coat is countertop. Yeah, so yeah, yeah, the very top, but only like six. So, thank you guys so much for joining, and thank you for your patience. And they're also very graceful because sometimes I don't use the best language, and I'll try. Hope you guys have an awesome day. Please hit the follow button, and don't make these boobs work for free. So have a really good day, and we'll be back this afternoon.